Hi everybody, Jason Stahl here. I'm building a Thatcher CX-5 aircraft here at Tech Shop in Arlington, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, being one of the first airplanes built, this, not, there's not much information on the internet, uh, hardly any construction photos. Plenty of the CX-4, which is similar construction style, but not exactly. Um, even the prototype uh, pictures, um, there were some redesigns done. It was built, tearing apart, built, rebuilt again. Um, not everything matches correctly. So I wanted to uh, have people uh, have a resource where they could go and see how an airplane goes together, not just how to form a rib, how to build a spar, how to rivet, uh, but actually how all these components to go together. So we're gonna start at the front and work our way back uh, on the fuselage, what I've got. Um, just to let people know, I've got about 200 hours into the build so far. 87 of those were for the spar. Um, I've got about 100 hours into the fuselage. Uh, the remaining hours were uh, getting to the CAD, uh, or the prints um, moved over to CAD. I've done a lot of water jet cutting for my ribs um, in there, so just kind of did some automation because it was fun and they got the tools here. So um, here's what you get for uh, 200 hours uh, in here. So you've got a fuselage uh, from the firewall back to the F7 vertical and the rear spar. So we're gonna go through, start at the front. Here, I want people to just be able to see. Uh, we got the, the firewall uh, mounting with the gussets, top and bottom. We've got the nose gear. This is not bolted in yet because I'm waiting for the, the actual nose gear to get in uh, that I can get it clamped tight and located correctly. Then I will drill and bolt that in there. Um, the scent, the pass-through hole has been machined in here. Um, have not put the, the hole in through the, the bottom nose skin uh, yet. Uh, one common error, I've seen a lot of people on build logs, they do this. They will cut the sheet when they cut out the blank to, to form this, measuring along the center line. And when you tilt it up, this line here cans back and it's too short. Um, so make sure you allow, this is going to be a longer distance along this upper edge. So measure that, cut your blank, you'll have plenty out here. You can take a Sharpie, mark it, when you pull it off, you cut it, uh, do your deburring, and uh, then you can re-stretch, strap it on again. Uh, when you strap this curve, this T6 does not like to take a bend very well um, in there. Um, I use the, the, the uh, ratchet straps in here. I initially came up to the top longer on uh, in here, but it had to put so to pull it up, took so much force, I was actually bending these longerons in. Um, if you just go in here along the top and then in through the, the fuselage, it actually pulls the uh, skins in, um, in there. And if you put a, just piece, a piece of wood along here to distribute the, uh, the, the three or four straps you use along the edge evenly, um, you get a good pull. You can then mark it uh, in there, remove it, trim it, and then using countersunk, uh, rivets just to hold it in. These are not the structural rivets. You can see these are just uh, 3 seconds um, rivets um, in there. So they're very small. They're countersunk so that the uh, side skin can lay flush and then the correct rivet line will be uh, marked, drilled, deburred, and riveted um, at a later time. Um, you have your contour ribs. Um, as I mentioned, I have access to a water jet cutter here at Tech Shop. So these were all water jet cut, came out very nicely uh, in here. One thing I did differently per the plans, and I've seen that people do this on the CX-4, um, the flanges for this part are supposed to be to the rear. And uh, I put them forward. It's a cleaner looking install when it's on the, uh, when you're sitting in here. So I reverse that. That now moves this face five eighths of an inch the other direction. That required these to be a little longer. So I just cut everything to fit uh, in here. So these are a little bit longer to allow that the face is not here. It's actually back here five eighths of an inch um, in there. The um, other thing that, that's required is that people have mentioned that both these A1 and A2 bulkheads, um, the drawings are not even not correct. Um, on there. So these are kind of cut to fit. These are six inches tall from the bottom of the skin to match the uh, seat ribs uh, in here. This one comes up in here, should be level along here as it's riveted to the front and then onto attached 
to the longeron as it bends upward here um, in here. So that's, uh, you can see I started fabbing uh, the uh, control uh, linkages in here. Um, Tech Shop has a tube bender, so I was actually able to actually bend this rather than having to cut and weld. You have your seat belt mounts. Uh, you may want to make sure you install these before you rivet the seat in. I did not, and so it was very difficult to get these drilled and installed. Uh, if I had done it outside the aircraft, it would have been a lot easier. Um, I ordered a what is called a tight fit angle drill. It's an attachment for regular drill from Aircraft Spruce. Uh, allow you to actually drill within a half an inch of a structure. Um, that would have made it easier. That comes here that later this week, but I hope there are some things you'll, you'll do need it for. These are installed and you need to drill these in place. Um, things like that, you can definitely use that in here. Um, I've got this temporary uh, installed here, the stringer, uh, so that you can split your skins into two sections uh, along here. Here's something that it is on the plans, but not very clear. Um, because the F5 vertical is bolted um, next to a 3 16th angle uh, at the attachment, you cannot bolt this directly to the spar. Either your vertical will be canted at an angle or your spar will be at an angle. And that you definitely cannot have. So there is a spacer and it, there's marked on the plans, but that's what it looks like. It's a little 3 16 spacer. You can do it with like fender washers or large diameter washers. Um, I machined a, an aluminum disc um, in there the right distance, uh, drilled through it, bolted it on there, and there your F5 can be vertical and your spar also remain vertical. Um, here's how the uh, longerons in the aft attach. It is a stacked set on uh, here with the top one a little bit longer to overlap and bolted through. Again, countersunk. Uh, these are standard AN bolts. There will be, once I get the bottom, uh, the aft portion skinned, as you can see, there's no skin in here cur currently. Um, there is a reinforcement bar 15 inches long that goes along the entire bottom that ties the whole uh, assembly together and provides reinforcement for the landing gear. The landing gear will sit, um, I believe it's just aft uh, of the spar. Um, in here. I've, uh, these are called the, the C3, 4, 5, and C6 ribs. Uh, they form the seat. C1 and 2 and C7 and 8 are shaped with the wing profile because they are outside of the fuselage. These are just formed the seat pan. These braces, the intercostals here, for C3 and C6 are not shown on the plans. Um, it shows the seat ribs uh, in, in, on here, but the spar construction is not showing the intercostal here. So make sure you do not put a rivet. You can see I've got very close to the rivet here, but just enough room that I could put that uh, in there. So make sure you leave room uh, in your rivet spacing to allow an intercostal uh, in here. The measurement between these two ribs are shown on the plans. Um, this intercostal is shown on the plans and is in the incorrect location. Um, it has it aligned with the F5 vertical um, in there. However, it did not take into account the contour that the skin um, is actually pushed out about an inch and three quarters. And this would be inside the fuselage and this has to be outside. So Dave Thatcher has said, um, relocate this just to outside of the, uh, the skin surface. Um, after the lower uh, uh, side has been installed and uh, that will provide the mounting point for the C2 uh, rib forming the wing right at the fuselage edge and likewise the C7 on the right hand side. Um, this of course is your C1 intercostal um, mounted and that is on the spar plans. Um, let's talk about the rear spar. Um, just a piece of angle uh, aluminum 3 16th wall, uh, one and a half inch uh, legs in there, but there are no dimensions given for how long it's supposed to be. Um, I did some figuring, I confirmed it with uh, Mr. Thatcher. It is 50 and one half inches long. That will bring the end right to the first rib of the wing on the, the actual wing itself. 
and uh, that will allow the, uh, the the rear spar of the wing uh, to come in here, mate, and you can fit the bolts on there. So 50 and one half inches long for the spar. Um, the plans kind of show this. There are dimensions, and then there's diagrams. The diagram actually shows the spar sitting on top of the longeron. That is not correct. It would be too high and too close. It sits right behind the end of the longeron, bolted with an angle. If you do some quick math and looking at the, the dimensions of this, um, you could actually build this in two different lengths depending on what diagram uh, dimensions you use. Uh, there's a half an inch difference between them. Uh, the shorter is the correct one. So the, the, what they do is they give you a dimension from the flange to the F7 rib and then from the F7 rib to the end as a 26 and uh, uh, a half inch I believe is what it is. Um, there is another dimension given from the spar uh, web all the way to the end of 28 and an eighth inch. That would be too long by half an inch. You would not be able to get the rear spar um, at the 28 and a half inches from the spar web to the aft side of the spar. There just wouldn't be enough room. So um, just kind of watch that. Use the uh, back flange uh, measurement of 26 and I believe 26 and a half. It's 23 to here and then three and a half to the end uh, in there. That gives you the longeron of the correct uh, distance. Also, the 23, this is kind of critical. And as you see, I actually installed it incorrectly once already. I just corrected this today. This has to end up aligning with the, uh, the seat back portion of the seat ribs to form one continuous surface so that you can have a seat back for the, for the passenger area. Um, this is 23 inches measured from the flange, so the measurements were correct. I was uh, incorrect in how I initially spaced it, I guess, uh, in there. So built per plans should come out flush um, with the seat back. There is no information on how to build this here. You've, you're given a template for the top portion of the F7 bulkhead, but nothing for the seat back. Um, so I've seen pictures where um, you have a second piece come in here and then flange, so you provide an opening in the center. That allows you to be able to get back into the fuselage for inspections, uh, for maintenance, if you need to get into uh, there for any other reasons. Um, you just have that. And then what you can just install some nut plates and screw in a panel and that will form the, the permanent seat back. Um, but you can see I've riveted everywhere except this one until I get this section uh, fabricated and installed. Um, I've left the rivets off in here. And that is a, a very important thing of where to do that. When you're installing uh, seat bottom skins uh, in here, um, I do have not installed any rivets along the bottom of the spar because I've yet to splice in this section back in here. Um, so that's pretty much it here. If anybody's got any questions, um, feel free to uh, leave a message uh, on there. I'll try and uh, get some inf more information out. And I'll be posting more of these videos as I get more and more of the aircraft uh, built. Uh, get to get the control surfaces done next. Um, the water jet is currently down, so the little brackets that need to be welded on here are going to have to be wait waited to uh, be fabricated. So that's it. Talk to you guys later. Thank you very much.